Hello everyone. Good evening. How are you? All right. We have a number of participants here. Can we have everyone switching on your cameras, please? Good evening. Dilipa Yasang. Hello everyone. Good evening. How are you? Can you hear me? All right. We have Hi, hi. Good evening. How are you? Can you ah great? Can you all switch on your cameras, please? Good evening. Good evening, Anusha. How are you? Right, perfect. Pasindu, Dulanji, Pasindu, how are you? Lihini, how are you? All right, great. Arun, Lakshini, how are you? Dilan, how's it going? Awesome. All right, guys, before we start the meeting, can you quickly put a message on the group saying whether you prefer doing this meeting in English or Sinhala? So if you like me to conduct the entire meeting in English, just say English. If you would like me to do it in Sinhala as well, just say Sinhala. All right. So just put a quick message on the group, English or Sinhala. Right. Both. Some people are saying both. Okay. English, English. Okay, majority English. Great. English, 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 English. Uh, some people are saying I don't know Singhala. <laughs> All right, that's great. English, English, English. All right, fantastic. All right. Super, super, super. Okay, so the overwhelming response is English. That makes things quite, quite easy for me as well. So we'll conduct the entire meeting in English. If anyone does not understand anything, please raise your hand. I'll give each of you a chance to ask questions. There will definitely be a Q&A session at the end of the meeting. But even during the session, at certain points when we need to take a break, I will give everyone a chance to clarify their doubts, ask any questions. So if you have a question, either put it into the chat box or just raise your hand. And when I give you the opportunity, you can ask the question. All right. Great. We have quite a number of participants here. I'll just speak with a few of you since some of you do have your camera on. Pasindu, how's it going? How are you? You can unmute yourself. Um, yes. <laughs> good, good. How's it going? How are you? All good? Super, super. Anuradha, how are you? Anuradha, you're in a bus, I think. <laughs> That's all right. All right. Good, good. Listen in, listen in. Lakshani, how's it going? How are you? Good, good. You're on mute. No one can hear you, but that's okay. I saw you waving your hand. <laughs> that's all good. Aruni, Dulanji, how are you guys? Good. I'm so doing well. How are you, sir? I'm good. Super. Darshana, how's it going? Going good. All right. Yeah, you're on mute. All of you are on mute. <laughs> So when you need to speak, make sure to unmute yourself. All right. That's okay. <laughs> All right. I think I've given you the option to unmute yourself. Uh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. So you can unmute yourself. All right. Okay. So we'll go straight into the meeting now. I think most people have joined and it's 7.33 already. All right. I hope everyone can see my screen. All right. If you can't see, please put a message on the group on the chat box. But I think you should be able to see my screen. Okay. So today we are going to talk about IELTS writing. This free webinar is being conducted on IELTS writing, IELTS essay writing in particular. Okay. I'm going to give you an overall understanding of the IELTS writing test about the timing for both part one and two and the marking criteria and all of that. But we are specifically going to focus on essay writing. Okay. So before we proceed, we have, someone has put a message. So are you providing a recording? Yes, yes. Uh, this meeting is going live on YouTube. 
So you can check it out on YouTube once we are done. So don't worry, there will be a recording. Okay. Before we move forward, sorry, before we move forward, we have a special offer for everyone that's joining the session today, that's joining the webinar today. If you are in this meeting and if you are live on the call today, you have the option of getting 5,000 rupees off from our 10 day ILTS program. All right. So our ILTS program is usually 25,000 rupees, but today we are just offering it at 20,000 rupees, but you have to register today. This offer is not valid from tomorrow. All right. So if you register today, just drop a message to this number saying, I want to register and you can register for our 10 day ILTS program. With the 10 day program, you also get access to our video course, which will allow you to watch and learn everything you need to about the ILTS exam in video format. You also get access to our information bank so that you wouldn't have to search the internet and go through the grind yourself. Everything has been compiled into one place and you have access to all of it. All right, great. That being said, let's move on. Okay, we are going to discuss a few things today. We are going to discuss the structure of the writing exam. That's the structure of the overall exam, both part one and part two. But then we are going to dive into essay writing, right? We're going to discuss the introduction, body and conclusion to essay writing. I'm going to touch on academic report writing and general letter writing. I'm not going to go into detail or discuss structure there. I'm just going to tell you what's the timing, what's the marking criteria, all of that, but nothing in detail. We are focusing mainly on essay writing today, all right? When we look at the writing exam, now you already know when we take the IELTS exam, we have four sections that we have to face. We have the listening, we have the reading, we have the writing, and we have the speaking test. The first three that I mentioned are done in a single take. That means on one day. So listening, reading, writing, all three exams are done on one day. The listening exam is done first. It takes 30 minutes. Okay, if you're doing the online test, it takes 30 minutes. If you're doing the paper-based test, it takes 40 minutes. If you're doing the reading or rather after the listening test, you have the reading test that takes one hour. All right. 60 minutes. That's the reading test. After that, the third exam in the sequence. All right. The third exam in the sequence, that is the writing exam. Okay. So you have listening first, reading second, and then writing. The speaking test is usually a separate exam altogether. So you will either have it on the same day during a, a, another session, or you will most probably have it on a different day altogether. All right. So most probably, let's say your, your first test is on the 26th of March. Your speaking test would be on the 25th, right? It could be any day. There, there is no specific day saying it has to be on the 25th. You can change the day either seven days before or seven days after. All right, so speaking tests can be done within a fortnight of doing the main test. All right, so what you're booking is essentially the main test. Clear? The, the writing test is the third exam in the sequence. That means after listening and reading, you have the writing test. It is also the last exam on the same day, right? So the reason that I have mentioned that is this. Now, when you do the listening test, it takes a lot of brain power, right? Because you have to listen very carefully. You have to, you have to answer the questions. You have to read the questions at the same time. It's quite a daunting test. So you're tired. Then you do the reading test. That makes you even more tired. So by the time you come to the writing test, mentally, you're feeling a bit down and out. Right, you're feeling a bit tired. And if any of you are doing this test for the second or third time, you would know what it feels like, right? Because when you go for the test, you're all bright, you're shiny, you're excited. When you do the listening test, okay, now you're a bit tired. You start doing the reading test, you're even a bit more tired, right? And then you go into the writing test. So the reason I mention this is because in that state, it's going to be difficult for you, especially if you haven't practiced or if you don't know the structure of how to write a good letter or report or even an essay, right? 
So what we are going to learn today, the essay writing structure, you have to know how to write this at the exam. So in order to understand it, you have to practice this at home. So what we learn today, you have to practice at home, right? Get used to writing in this structure. Now, usually even in, in, in my classes, when I do this lesson for the first time, the first essay that students send after learning this essay writing structure, they never stick to the structure, right? Only one or two students out of maybe 20 or 30 might stick to the structure the first time, right? Because our brain takes some time to understand, comprehend, and implement what we learn, okay? So you have to watch this session again and again, understand the structure correctly, and follow that structure to the T, okay? Because in the structure that we are going to learn today, there are no loopholes, there are no mistakes, all right? If you write your essay in the structure that we are going to learn, definitely your essay writing is going to be at a seven plus band school, right? Okay. So when we talk about the writing test, we have two sections and we have 60 minutes to face the test. So two sections, regardless of whether you're doing general or academic, you have only two sections, part one and part two, and you have 60 minutes to complete both of those tasks, okay? This is how your marks are divided, all right? So for part one, 33% of your mark is allocated. For part two, 66% of your mark is allocated. What is part two? Part two is the essay, all right? Part one is the report or letter. So if you're doing the academic IELTS exam, you will be writing a report right? You will be writing a report. If you are doing the general IELTS exam, you will be writing a letter. All right. Regardless of whether you are doing academic or general, regardless of whether you are writing the report or the letter, you can take only 20 minutes to write the answer for part one. Do you understand? You can't take more than 20 minutes if you take more than 20 minutes, you're really, it's detrimental to your overall time, right? Ideally, you should finish writing your part one answer in about 15 to 20 minutes, all right? If you can finish it in 15 minutes, that is fantastic. And I'll tell you why this can be done, why this is easy to write, and why you can finish it in 15 minutes, okay? When we get to the marking criteria, I will elaborate on that. But keep in mind the timing is critical because when you're writing the essay, the word count is a lot more. The quality of words have to be a lot more. The creativity has to be a lot more. That is why you're getting 66% of the mark for the essay. That is why you need 40 minutes, double the time that you take for part one for the essay. Do you understand? I'm not saying you only have to do the essay within that one hour. No, part one is equal important. I mean, 33% of your mark is going there. But timing wise, more time has to be allocated for the essay. So the moment you hit 20 minutes on the clock, you have to stop writing your part one answer and move on to part two. Do you understand? It's very important. It's very critical that you follow this advice. All right, so 20 minutes is your maximum time for part one. It says here at least 150 words, okay? So at least 150 words means you cannot write less than 150 words, okay? If you write less than 150 words, your band score will go down dramatically, okay? Your band score will drop dramatically. Therefore, you always have to write more than 150 words. The ideal word count, the word count that we recommend as teachers and also by Cambridge is 175 to 200 words. Okay, 175 to 200 words. That's the ideal word count. 
Because if you write 175 words, it means you're better or you can elaborate more than 150, which, mean, which means you're not basic. You're not in the lower end of the spectrum. Okay. You have written 25 words more than the minimum required word count. 200 words means much better. 50 words more than the required word count. Is there a maximum word count that you can write? Is there a cap? The answer is no. There is no cap. You can write 300, 400, 500, 600, 700 words if you want to. But think about it logically. How are you going to write 300, 400 words in 20 minutes? Do you understand? That's where the practical issue comes. You can't write that many words. So what do you do? I mean, the required word count is only 150. 200 words is more than enough. 200 words is easily manageable within 20 minutes. Okay. Easily manageable. Ideally, 15 minutes, you should be done. Nothing to stress, nothing to worry. 200 words, more than enough. Clear? Never ever write less than 150 words. Your marks will drop drastically. Right? Then we come to part two, which is the essay. As, I, as I've clearly mentioned, 66% of your mark, it goes to the essay. All right. You have 40 minutes to write the essay. But this would depend on how much time you take for part one. Okay. If you're smart and you finish your part one in 15 minutes, you have 45 minutes to answer the essay. However, if you lose track of time and you are unable to finish within 20 minutes and you go up to 25 minutes, you have only 35 minutes to answer the essay. 35 minutes means you're going to struggle, right? So by chance, if you are unable to write your conclusion, let's say in your essay, you're going to lose quite a bit of marks, okay? Let's say you don't have time to check your answer. You have made multiple grammar errors, multiple punctuation errors. You're going to lose a lot of marks. Do you understand what I mean? So always timing is very important. You need to have a minimum of 40 minutes to write the essay. And I'll explain why. Okay, but just keep that in mind. At least 250 words means, obviously, you can't write less than 250 words. 275 to 300 words is your ideal word count. But here, most students, I mean, even in my classes, and even you, after you learn this structure, will understand that even 300 words might not be enough. So most people, they go up to about 350 Right, Most people, most students that write a good quality answer go up to about 325, 350 words. Again, there is no maximum word limit that you can write. You can write 500, 600 words, but practically within 40 minutes, 350 is ideal. Okay. Keep in mind this as well. You get marks not for the quantity of the answer you write or not the quantity of words you write, okay? Anything after 250, you will get marks for the word count, okay? Even if you write 251, that means you have crossed their threshold of a minimum word count. After that, what they're giving marks for is the quality of your answer, the creativity and the vocabulary, mainly the vocabulary, right? Mainly the vocabulary of your answer is what you're going to get marks on, right? So as much as all of this is important, the timing, the word count, all of this is very important, where the difference is going to be in terms of where you get a higher band score is going to be your vocabulary, structure, and creativity, all right? So we'll discuss that in the marking criteria next, okay? Here are a few things that you have to keep in mind about what you should not do when writing both part one and part two. Never, never go off topic. Okay. I'll say that in Singhala as well. Topic ke keng pita kisima deak liyanna epa. Right? Topic ke keng pita kisima deak 
लिया नहीं पा इफ यू राइट एनी थिंग आउटसाइड ऑफ द टॉपिक इट्स गोइंग टू बी रिडांड एज इन इट्स गोइंग टू बी पॉइंट देर इज नो पॉइंट इन राइटिंग एनी थिंग आउटसाइड ऑफ द टॉपिक बिकॉज थिंक अबाउट इट राइट वन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी वर्ड इज नॉट अ लॉट ऑफ वर्ड्स सो इफ यू आर नॉट राइटिंग अप टू द पॉइंट वाई वुड दे गिव यू मार्क्स if you can't write i mean they'll give a graph right let's say for example if you do report writing they will give you a line graph if you can't explain what is on that line graph in 150 words and you have written something completely unrelated they are not going to give you marks essay is the same if they have given an essay topic and if your examples if your points if they are not sticking to the topic you will not get marks very simple right so don't go off topic i already told you about this don't write less than the given word limit okay no bullet points in the sense your answers always whether it's part 1 or part 2 you always have to write paragraphs you can't write point 1 point 2 point 3 it has to always be written in paragraphs clear no bullet points no points right this one no memorized answers or copy the reason again so i've taken these points from the british council website right and the reason that they have said this no memorized answers or copy is that in certain classes they give you set structures right set wordings that you copy paste onto your ielts exam answer sheet this is the worst thing that you can do you can't look at a document and memorize answers for specific themes and try to replicate that at the exam it's pointless right the best thing that you can do is know a standard structure a standard essay structure which you can apply to any theme which they have given and write a concise detailed answer about the topic right a detailed answer about the topic if you try to memorize and go you will get jumbled you will get confused and you will not be able to write a quality answer at the exam so don't try to memorize answers just try to understand the essay writing structure and follow it accordingly all right simple for those of you who are doing the physical or the paper based test these are the sheets that you are going to get for those of you who are doing the online test you will have to type on the screen if you are doing the paper based test you can ask for as many papers as you want right so don't be shy they'll just give you two at the beginning but you can ask for as many papers as you want no stress all right okay now this is something that you have to listen and understand very carefully once i explain this i will give you an opportunity to ask questions okay so we'll discuss a few questions that you may have but i want you to understand this very clearly okay this is the marking criteria for your writing section both part 1 and part 2 marking criteria is included here okay you have two separate marking criteria for part 1 and part 2 essentially both of these things mean the same thing they're giving you marks for content but i've included two specific things you have to note when you're writing answers for each one right okay we'll discuss what they are task achievement right task achievement is just a name which they have given for the relevant mark they want when you are writing an answer for task 1 you can't have personal opinions clear you can't have personal opinions if you are writing an answer to a report for example let's say you have a line graph right and there is a line which has gone from point a to point b they have not given a reason right let's say the carbon dioxide in sri lanka has increased from point a to point b from 2011 to 2014 no reason is given if you write 
The carbon dioxide emissions have increased in Sri Lanka from point A to point B because of vehicle gas emissions. You will lose marks. Do you understand? Your opinion about that line graph doesn't matter. You can't have opinions. You don't have to think when you are writing an answer for a report. All you do is you look at that graph, you look at that chart, you look at that pie chart, table, whatever. You describe exactly what you see. Do you understand? You describe exactly what you see. You do not have to think. You do not have to give reasons. Okay? No thinking. Don't think in part one. Letter writing is the same. Letter writing, it's like this. You're not you. Right? Let's say, for example, Ruksha. Ruksha is not Ruksha. Ruksha has to take a character which they have given in that letter. Right? For example, they will say, your best friend is coming from Italy. Write them a letter outlining the travel plans for the coming month. Right? You are that character. You don't have a friend called Nathan in Italy. Right? It will be pure coincidence if you do. <laughs> right? So in any case, you don't have a friend in Italy. But you're assuming this character and you're bringing the friend down and giving them travel plans. You're not you. So you're not writing your opinions. You're writing to fit the marking criteria. You're, you're writing to fit the question. Clear? So again, no opinions. You don't have to think. They have given you the points. You just follow those points. Very simple. Right? Task achievement. Task one. Very simple. These three things are the same for task one and task two. Right? So when I talk about this, it pertains to both task one and task two. This one is the marking criteria that you have for task two. Task response. Right? Here, where it differentiates or where it is different from this is that in task two, your opinions are encouraged. Do you understand? You have to write your opinions. Now, if you watch maybe certain YouTube videos or if you follow other teachers, you've been to other classes, sometimes they might say, okay, there are different types of essays. Only for specific types of essays, you have to write your opinion. Have any of you heard that? If you have, just raise your hand. Right? But that is wrong. You should not write your opinion for certain types of essays. You should write your opinion for every type of essay you get. Clear? Because what else are you going to write outside of your opinion? In most essays, yes, they do ask what is your opinion. But even if they don't, you have to write your opinion. The entire essay is based on your opinion. It's basically a debate, right? You take a stance and you either argue your point or you argue both points, right? That's what you do. So you have to have an opinion. If you don't have an opinion, you don't have an essay. Is that clear? So your opinion is very, very important. I hope that makes sense. Right. I'll give you a chance to ask questions. Right. Once I'm done. Lexical resources is the next marking criteria. So this is this is the same for both task one and task two. No difference. Right. Lexical resources means quality words, quality vocabulary. Let's say, for example, you have to say a line or let's say, a certain metric increased from point A to point B. So you have used the word increased. The second line also, you have said increased. So now you have said increased, increased twice. Third line also, you're going to say increased. Increased, increased, increased. Now what does the examiner understand? Examiner understands, ah, okay, this person does not have good vocabulary. This person has a very limited vocabulary. Right? So if you said the first line increased, the second one grew, and the third one expanded. Increased, grew, expanded. Then the examiner realizes, ah, okay, he has actually done some work, he has actually studied, he knows good English vocabulary. Do you understand what I mean? Right. Let's say, for example, you're using cohesive devices, connecting words, right? And you always say, therefore, 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 therefore. 
right? You have said it about four or five times throughout your essay. Examiner understands, okay, he doesn't have a great vocabulary. Let me reduce the marks. But if you say, therefore, moreover, aside from this, contrary to that, examiner knows, okay, he has actually gone through the work. He knows the good cohesive devices. So let me increase his band score. Do you understand what I mean? Lexical resources. All right. Lexical resources means quality vocabulary. Okay. You might have a question. Maybe some of you are thinking it. How do I increase my vocabulary? How do I expand my vocabulary? There are a few things that you can do. All right. The first thing is if you have two to three months for the exam, which means you have a substantial amount of time, you can start watching videos in English. And by videos, I particularly mean things like podcasts, documentaries, audiobooks, right? In English, ideally British English, right? Podcasts, documentaries, audiobooks. The reason I say podcasts, documentaries, and audiobooks is because especially with audiobooks and documentaries, the English vocabulary they use is very rich, right? They use quite extensive vocabulary. So you start picking up on certain words. Then what you do is there is no point in just listening to these, right? You could listen to it day in, day out. It's not really going to improve your vocabulary. You have to try and speak in English and try to implement these words, use these words in your day-to-day -day language, right? A lot of people will say, listen to podcasts, read books, listen to songs, whatever, whatever, whatever. But... The only way that our brain is able to comprehend and implement information and actually retain information is if we practice it, right? You can listen to English podcasts the whole year, but your English vocabulary will not improve, right? You have to listen to it and you have to try and implement at least one new word into your vocabulary. That's how you're going to improve your lexical resources all right furthermore i mean to make this process easier for you uh, in our information bank we have given you vocabulary under certain themes right vocabulary under certain themes you can just browse those and again i mean there's too many for you to memorize everything but you can actually understand four or five words from each theme try to implement it in your speaking simple right grammatical range and accuracy this means you need to have correct grammatical structures, okay? If your, let's say, for example, your conjunctions, right? Your connecting words or your auxiliary verbs. If these things are wrong, you're not going to get a lot of marks, right? If you write, let's say, present tense verbs for a past tense scenario, you're going to lose marks, right? So you need to have at least, you don't need to have a 100% hold of grammar, because I've had students who, you know, they had about 60 to 70% hold of grammar and they were able to get to a six plus band score, right? Even with writing, speaking, everything, you can still get to a 6.5, 7 plus band score if you have an average hold of grammar. Of course, the better your grammar is, the less chance you have of losing marks there. But keep in mind, they give marks for grammar. Coherence and cohesion. Okay, let me explain this to you as well. Coherence, right? Coherence is the overall structure of whatever you're writing. If it's the essay or part one, right? Overall structure of your essay or your part one answer, right? That is essentially your introduction, body and conclusion for your essay. And then introduction, overview and body for your part one report writing. For general letter writing, there's an entirely different structure for that, right? So you have to understand this overall structure first. So the overall connectivity, overall structure, as well as the connectivity to the question, right? Staying to the point. That's why I said don't go out of topic because there is a marking criteria for that. Right? There is a marking criteria for that. If your answer goes out of the topic, you're going to lose marks. So coherence means your overall structure and connectivity to the question. Cohesion 
means the connectivity that exists between each line and different paragraphs. How you connect these lines and paragraphs together. Do you understand how you connect these lines and paragraphs together? So for that, you need cohesive devices. Good cohesive devices must be used. Right? Connecting words must be used. So coherence is the overall structure and connectivity to the question. Coherence is the intricate connectivity. That is the connectivity between each sentence and paragraph. Is that clear? All right. Now I'm going to let you unmute yourselves. And you can ask any questions that you may have. Do you have any questions? You can raise your hand and you can ask any questions. If you are, I don't know, too shy to ask it by raising your hand, you can always drop a message onto the, the chat box. <laughs> did you understand? Okay. Pasindu, did you want? Okay. Mushtaq, you have a question. Yes. What's the question? Yeah. Hi, sir. Um, just the uh, the final point that you're referring to, the coherence and cohesion, that was a bit unclear for me. Mm. Okay. So coherence, coherence is two things, right? First of all, you need to have an overall structure to whatever answer you're writing. Let's say, for example, you're writing an essay. The overall structure would be that you need to have an introduction, body, and conclusion, right? At the same time, everything you write needs to be on topic. That means everything, every example, every point, everything you write needs to be connected to the topic. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Okay. Cohesion is the connectivity you have between your sentences and paragraphs. So let's say, for example... You're writing two lines that support each other, right? You're writing fact one and fact two. So instead of connecting this using, let's say, a basic cohesive device like and, you can add something extra like additionally, right? Moreover, do you understand? So that connectivity that you create between the lines and then let's say you're writing paragraph one and paragraph two, so the first paragraph you write, you start it by saying to begin with, to show that this is your first paragraph. Then as you move into the second paragraph, instead of saying secondly, for example, you might say moreover, right? You might say therefore, right? You might say in addition to the above. Do you get what I mean? So you're creating that connection that the first paragraph and the second paragraph support each other. Let's say the second paragraph does not agree with the first paragraph. You can say on the contrary, on the flip side, right? Do you get my point? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. No problem. All right. Can, so Nishadi has asked a question. Can those papers given on exam use for rough work? Yes, yes. That's what I said. You can ask as many papers as you want. You can use a few to do your planning, your rough work. And then you can use the rest to actually write your answer. Yes, you can ask for as many papers as you want. Any other questions? There was someone else who raised their hand. No? Uh, so usually I always say this. Uh, Kasun, yes. Kasun, what's your question? Sir, uh, which type you suggest uh, should we take the writing in paper or the online one, doing in the computer? Which one is the best? <laughs> it That's a tricky question, Kasun, because the answer to that question depends on what you're most comfortable with. If you are comfortable with writing on paper, then I would suggest go for that. Also, in my personal experience, I tend to make a lot of spelling errors when I type because I type very fast and I always rely on Grammarly or I rely on autocorrect to correct my grammar as I'm typing. So I don't pay attention to it. 
right? And I've got so used to it that when I type, I just don't even think about what I'm typing. I just type, type, type. And there are so many mistakes before, right? But when I write, I'm much more careful, right? When I write, I'm much more careful. I'm able to pay attention to what I'm writing and continue because I can't write as fast as I can type. That's the reality, right? If I were doing the test, I personally, I would prefer the written test because even if I take the reading test, it, the paper is physically there, right? It's easy for me to highlight. It's easy for me to go through all those things. It, it works in my favor. Now, my brother, he's doing the ILTS test at the end of March and he is actually doing the computer-based test, right? Because he prefers typing and he says, okay, my handwriting is terrible. <laughs> so I prefer to type because people can actually understand what I what I write, right, or what I type. So it depends. I mean, if you're comfortable with writing, I would say take the paper-based test. If you are more comfortable typing and if you're confident that your spellings won't go wrong, then better off taking the computer-based test. Okay, Varuna, yeah, did, does that answer your question? Kasun? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. What are the grammatical components we have to improve? Look, one of the grammatical components is that you have to get your auxiliary verbs right. Most people, that's where a lot of them make mistakes. The was, the were, am, is, are, have, has. This is where a lot of people go wrong. So you need to understand your tenses, right? The 12 tenses. And then you, then you need to understand what are the different auxiliary verbs, what are the sentence structures. If you are writing let's say a past tense, let's say a past continuous tense sentence, what is the auxiliary verb you have to use, right? And then you also have to understand you can't write simple basic sentences. You have to try and use conjunctions to try and expand your sentences to more compound sentences. So if you say Kamala went to the market, full stop, Kamala bought five bananas at the market. Right, those are two simple sentences, right? But if you combine it and you say Kamala went to the market and bought five bananas, you will get more marks just for using that word. And do you understand what I mean? So conjunctions, auxiliary verbs, those are the things you would have to pay attention to. Uh, Dulanji has asked, sir, do you correct our writing answers in your 10 day course? Yes, yes, of course. We give you live feedback for your writing as well as your speaking. Right, so writing and speaking, you get live feedback from us. When we are doing the writing paper-based test, are we supposed to do at campus or at home? Oh, uh, paper-based online? There is no paper-based online. There is either paper-based or there is the online, right? Uh, okay, so what you have to understand is there are two tests that you can do. You have the computer-based test. You have the physical paper-based test. Both of these, you have to go to an IELTS certified center and you have to get it done. You have to book the exam through either British Council or IDP and get it done. All right. There is an online test. Don't do that online test. It's not valid, right? For your going abroad purposes, for your visa purposes, it's not valid. You can only do the computer-based test or the physical test, the paper-based test right? Computer-based or paper-based. Online is something different, right? Okay, what, last question. Ah, okay. Salma has said, got it, thanks. Great. So we'll move on then. We'll move on. Let me mute you again. Right. All right. So we discussed all of these, the same things. Ah, now we come to, we're focused now on essay writing, right? Keep in mind when you're writing the answers for part one, that is report writing or letter writing, you don't necessarily have to plan what you're going to write. I mean, I personally don't recommend it simply because you have to look at something, whether it's, if it's the letter, you just have to look at the question. If it's the report, you just have to look at the chart. You don't have to plan. You can just keep, start writing immediately, right? With the essay, I highly recommend that you start planning before you start writing for the simple reason that if you get stuck in the middle with no good idea or no good example, 
you will have to erase that and start writing again, which means you're really going to cut into your time. And time is very important. Do you understand? So I would suggest you stick to a very simple planning structure. Okay. I will tell you exactly what you need to plan. Okay. Let me put that onto the chat box. If you take paragraph, paragraph one, right? You need to know what your point is and what your example is. And then you have paragraph two. You need to know what your point is, what your example is. This is it. This is all you have to plan. If I'm going to write two paragraphs, in my first paragraph, what is my point? What is my example? If I'm going to write a second paragraph, what is my point? What is my example? Right? Uh, in the rare occasion that you're going to write three paragraphs, most often you would not have to write three paragraphs. But if you feel the need or if you have the time or if you have the words and you want to write three paragraphs, plan it out first. What is my point? What is my example? Do you have to plan your introduction and conclusion? No. Your introduction and conclusion depends on your body. Clear? Everything you write depends on what you're going to write in your body paragraph. Okay? So your introduction and conclusion, you don't have to plan. Just the body. So once you have planned and you have organized in which order you're going to write these points and examples, you write your essay. Clear? Once you have written your essay, you do two things called evaluating and revising. Evaluating and revising. Okay. What is the difference? It's the same thing. I mean, you might think, okay, these are just two similar words. No. When you evaluate your answer, you check for a few specific things, right? When you evaluate your answer, you check for changes in your vocabulary, changes in your phrasing, all right? If you feel like you have better words to use in place of words that you have already used, let's say you have increased, you have used the word increase two or three times, you realize that and you have to change it, okay? Or let's say you have used a word like and multiple times, so you cut it off and you have to change it. Phrasing, the way you have phrased a certain example, the way you have phrased a certain sentence needs to be changed, needs to be written in a better way. That's what you do when you evaluate. So ideally, you would need about three minutes for that, three to four minutes. Revising, you check for three things. You check for your grammar, you check for your spellings, and you check your punctuations. Grammar, spellings, punctuations. Write that down. Grammar, spellings, punctuation. Remember, punctuations carry a lot of weight. Why is that? Punctuations are the same across all languages, most languages, right? Even if you write in singular, we use full stops. Even if you write in singular, we use exclamation marks, question marks, commas, all of that. So if you make mistakes in your punctuation, you're going to lose marks, right? Grammar is equally important. There's a specific marking criteria for grammar. And then spellings are also very important, right? You know by now that listening and reading if you make a single letter that is out of place, you will lose the mark. It's not that strict for your essay, but it is still quite strict. So you need to ensure that your spellings are on point. Clear? I hope that makes sense, right? What is the timing you take for all of this? To plan and organize five minutes. Now you have 40 minutes in total. To plan and organize, you have five minutes, right? To write the essay, you have 30 minutes, right? That's why you can't take more time for your part one. You have only 30 minutes to actually write the essay, right? So five minutes to plan, 30 minutes to write, three minutes to evaluate, two minutes to revise. Clear? Five minutes to plan, 30 minutes to write, three minutes to evaluate, two minutes to revise. I hope you understand what I'm saying, right? Okay. All right, so most of these points we have spoken about in detail, so I'm not going to go into detail about that. Just one point we missed out, which is do task one first. 
right? Sometimes people, they look at the essay, they think, oh, this is the easiest essay in the world. Let me write the essay first. No. Set yourself a timer, 20 minutes, finish task one, get it out of the way. I personally believe that your creativity flows in part two. There is no creativity involved in part one. Therefore, part one is quite boring. Right? It's not very interesting to write. So when you know that after you're done with your creativity, you have something boring to write, to me, that can be quite demoralizing. Right? So I personally never would take the part one first. Uh, sorry, the part two first. Right? I'd always do task one and then do task two. Right? So that's what I recommend to all my students as well. Always finish off task one. That's the report or the letter. And then do task two. Clear? All right. So everything else we have discussed. All right. Now we come to the actual structure of the essay. Okay. I'm going to again give you an opportunity to ask questions after we are done with this. Right. So understand this structure 100%. I'll also give you the opportunity to write maybe the introduction and put it onto the chat box. I'll have a look at just a few of what you, just a few answers of a few people who send it in. All right. This is your overall structure, introduction, body, and conclusion, right? If this was the only thing that you had to know, <laughs> The teachers wouldn't have a job. You wouldn't need to go for a class. <laughs> right? So this is not the only thing you have to know. In the introduction, what do you have to write? In the body, what do you have to write? In the conclusion, what do you have to write? That is what we are going to discuss. All right? Now, for those of you who have not seen an IELTS essay and you're here for the first time with zero prior knowledge, this is the standard of an IELTS essay. This is not like your O-level or A-level essays where they said, write about my country, write about my dog, my pet, my mother, my father. No. These are intelligent, debatable topics. Right? I'll give you an example. I'll just read this out, right? Some people view conflict between teenagers and parents as a necessary part of growing up, while others view it as something negative, which should be avoided. All right. This is the kind of topic where you can sit down and have a conversation with somebody. Right. And honestly, one of the best ways that you can improve your essay writing skills or improve your ideas for essay writing is actually by talking with people about these topics, right? It's actually about talking with people about these topics. Because guys, I mean, even with people who have joined my classes, one of the biggest problems that I have had with a lot of students is that students don't have ideas. They don't know how to elaborate. They don't know how to give an example because they haven't spoken about these things. They haven't read about these things. They haven't thought about these problems, right? So they don't have ideas. Do you understand what I mean? Now, no need to think of something that is this complex, right? Just, just think, if I asked one of you to unmute yourself and talk about, let's say something very popular, maybe about the Israel-Palestine war, right? Out of the 146 people who are here, I'm willing to take a bet that it will be less than six to seven people who will actually have a good understanding of what is happening and talk facts and examples. Guaranteed. Right? And the reason is we don't really do a lot of research. We don't watch news. We don't read books. We don't read papers. We don't listen to things that are happening in the outside world. Right? In order to write an essay like this, you need to have examples. You need to have good facts. You need to have ideas. So my suggestion, my best suggestion, and trust me, if you follow this advice, you will have so many ideas to write in your essay. 
just select one topic per day sit with your family could be your girlfriend wife husband daughter son anybody friend i don't care sit with somebody talk about this topic talk about it in english if you talk about this in english at the exam you will have so many ideas to write guaranteed you don't even have to sit and write essays now, of course writing the essay will give you an idea about the structure but to generate the ideas just talk about it right just talk about it that's the best thing that you can do all right okay with that in mind these are just a few more examples of questions we are going to understand how to write an introductory paragraph okay the introduction is the first thing that the examiner is going to read right when he takes your paper and when he starts reading your essay your introduction is the first thing that he is going to read we always say first impression is the last impression right so if your first impression is bad the examiner is going to look at your whole essay in a very bad light so you have to ensure that you give the best possible introduction at the very beginning okay this is how you write the best possible introduction every single introduction you write has to have three things three very very important sentences all right three important sentences the first one is you paraphrase the fact based statement now in your mind you are thinking what is a fact based statement right let me tell you what a fact based statement is if you look at any of the questions that are given you usually have a statement and then the question now if you read this it says in their advertising businesses nowadays usually emphasize that their products are new in some way that's the statement there is no question there that's just a statement this is the question why is this do you think this is a positive or negative development right at least 250 words right this is your statement this is what you are going to paraphrase is that clear this is what you are going to paraphrase paraphrase means writing what you understand in your own words okay writing what you understand in your own words okay there are few ways to do this we elaborate on this during our classes but let me give you a very basic understanding the first way of paraphrasing is just changing the key words right now it says in the advertising so instead of advertising you can say marketing in their marketing instead of businesses you can say companies in their marketing companies instead of saying nowadays you can say today in their marketing companies today usually instead of emphasize you can say highlight that their products so instead of products you can say goods and services are new innovative in some way so what do you get in their marketing companies today typically highlight that their goods and services are innovative in some way that is basic very very basic way of paraphrasing right if your average just a bit above basic you would say in today's context companies highlight that their goods and services are fresh or innovative in some way that's one step above basic that's average if you're pro you would take the meaning of this and you would write it in your own words completely just change this whole structure right but either way you paraphrase the fact based statement if i show you a different question look at this many people say we have a responsibility to look after the elderly people in our family or community that's your fact based statement there is no question there there's nothing there it's just a statement this is the question right so statement so even here is the same thing up till this point it's just a statement right so the first thing you do is you paraphrase the fact based statement second i told you at the very beginning that any essay you write you have to put your opinion where do you put it 
you put it right after you paraphrase the fact-based statement. Clear? Right after you paraphrase the fact-based statement, you have to say what is your stance on the question. Do I agree with it? Do I disagree with it? Do I think it's a positive development or a negative development? Do I think it has advantages or disadvantages? I believe, in my opinion, according to my view, it is my belief that you have to use a phrase like that and state your opinion, right? Paraphrase the fact-based statement first, then write your opinion on the topic. Clear? Third one is structure of the remaining essay. Now, this is where you should have planned, guys. If you haven't planned, you don't know whether you're going to write two paragraphs or three paragraphs or four paragraphs. You don't know. How are you going to write this third sentence without knowing? You can't. So therefore, you always have to plan. So what do, what do I mean by structure of the remaining essay? You have to say, in my essay, I'm going to outline my belief in two points followed by a conclusion. When I say that, the examiner knows, ah, okay, this person is going to write two paragraphs. This person is going to write two paragraphs, right? If you're going to write three paragraphs, you can say, I'm going to validate my stance using three examples followed by a conclusion. Do you understand? You have to write how many body paragraphs you are going to write, how many points you're going to write in the rest of your essay, what is the structure of the rest of your essay, right? That is sentence three, okay? This is an example. In today's context, most businesses tend to highlight the novelty of their products in their marketing campaigns. Or we have said companies today often emphasize that their products are innovative or fresh in some aspect of the advertising. So what have I done? I've paraphrased the fact-based statement. Very average way, right? Your view on the topic, personal opinion. I believe that highlighting a product's originality is a smart marketing move. Smart marketing move means I think it's a good thing. It's a positive development. And the majority of businesses do this as a disruptive marketing tactic in an effort to increase their market share, right? So I think it's a positive development. Structure of the remaining essay. I have presented two supporting reasons to validate my stance followed by a conclusion. I have written two paragraphs to support my idea. What is my idea? That it's a positive development and I have finally written a conclusion. Do you understand? That is how you write a good introduction a complete introduction all right so let me give you an opportunity to write an introduction to this particular essay right i'll give you five minutes in the meantime if you have any questions you can ask but if you write the introduction and if you put it onto the chat box i'll have a look at it i'll give you some feedback so I'll give you five minutes. I've unmuted you. You can ask any question about the introduction. And at the same time, you can start writing and write the introduction to this particular essay, right? Always remember three sentences have to be there. You have to paraphrase the fact-based statement. You have to give your opinion and you have to write the structure of the remaining essay. Right, let me look at the questions that have been asked. Salma has said, sir, can you repeat, please? What do you want me to repeat, Salma? You can let me know and I'll repeat. Sir, I always make a lot of spelling mistakes. How I make this error? Okay, Ravindi, so you have to practice with spellings. I mean, we fix it through dictation and it's just constant practice. There's really no other way. You have to... Keep writing different essays. Every time you make an error, make note of that error and then correct the mistakes as you move along. All right. Kasun has asked, 
Hi, sir. Is it okay to use both US and UK accents for the exam? Uh, yes. I mean, what do you have a UK or US accent? Kasu? It, it it doesn't really matter if you if you're asking about pronunciation oh oh you mean you mean spellings yes uk or us spellings uh uk spellings are obviously encouraged british spellings are obviously encouraged they don't really cut marks just because you use us uh, us um, spellings so it doesn't really matter but as much as possible try to stick to british spellings and British pronunciation. Sir, don't we need to write a general statement at the beginning? No, you don't have to write a general statement at the beginning. What you do is you paraphrase the fact-based statement that has been given, right? You don't have to write a general statement. Any other questions? So I hope some of you are writing. I'll give you five minutes. If you can write and put your introduction, I'll give you the feedback, right? So my handwriting is so terrible. Will that be a problem? <laughs> yes, that will actually be a problem. So I would recommend that you either fix your handwriting or you do the, on the, the computer-based test, right? Because if the examiner is unable to understand what you have written, that is going to be a problem. So I would suggest that I would suggest that you take the computer-based test. Or you fix your handwriting, either one. <laughs> okay, is anyone writing an answer? Can I see a show of hands if you're writing? Or can I move on? If you, if anyone is writing the answer to this question, just put your hand up. Ah, okay. Mushtaq is writing. So I'll give Mushtaq maybe. Mushtaq is the only one who's writing. <laughs> no one else. Ah, okay. So some people are putting on the, on the chat box. All right. So quickly put your answer. Any other questions? But any other questions? You know, usually I always say this. If people don't have questions, it means that I've really done my job well and people have understood everything I've said or they have not understood a single thing. <laughs> so they're just confused as to what to even ask. <laughs> so I hope that I hope that it's the former and that you have understood everything. Shanali, are you there? Have you understood what, what we've done so far? Shanali seems to be... Uh, uh, okay, you have understood everything? Ah, uh, That's great. Dinu has asked, a lot of people say we have an obligation... Ah, okay, so this is the introduction. A lot of people say we have an obligation to care for the aged people within our family or society. Okay. So, you know, that's just, you have just paraphrased the fact-based statement. That's good, right? But you need to have the other two as well. You need to give your opinion and then you need to outline what you're going to or how you're going to structure the rest of your essay. Sajani has said, in this contemporary era, People have to be responsible to look after their parents within the house or in the society. Fine. Again, all you have done is you have paraphrased the fact-based statement. This is what you have done. Good. Not bad. But you need to have these two. Right? You need to have these two. You need to have, see, if you look at the introduction, it's all three of these things. In today's context, right, most businesses tend to highlight the novelty of their products in their marketing campaigns. I believe that highlighting a product's originality is a smart marketing move and the majority of businesses do this as a disruptive marketing tactic in an effort to increase their market share. I have presented two supporting reasons to validate my stance followed by a conclusion. Do you understand? Sajani, Dinu, do you guys get it? 
it's not just this sentence. All of this has to be there. Clear. Good attempt, but make sure to add these as well. Okay, Nishadi. Nishadi has said, I already booked a day to 23rd on this month, paper based. Is it possible to change to computer based? No. No. If you have already booked the paper based, you can't change it back to computer based. You probably can, but you will have to call British Council or IDP or wherever you booked it from. And then, I mean, it's, it's, it's a process. You'll have to write to them, you'll have to email them, and it's quite a process. Right? So, one doubt. In an introduction, all the three parts must be written in one paragraph. Yes, just like this. Just like this. You see this here? This is this is the introduction. Do you understand? Salma, do you get it? All of those three parts are written in one paragraph. So, this is my full introduction. Do you understand? This is my full introduction. Right? I hope that makes sense. Right? <laughs> I can see Maheshi on the camera. She's showing around the room. <laughs> right. Okay, Salma, it's clear to you. Great, great. Wonderful. All right, guys. So we'll move on. I'm not going... Uh... Oh, Aisha has put an answer. Most of the folk state that it's an obligation to take care of the... Okay, the geriatrics in one's family or society. I am in favor of the aforementioned fact, and then I'm going to validate my stance using two paragraphs followed followed by a conclusion. Geriatrics. That's the first time I'm hearing that word. Does that mean elderly? Aisha? Are you there? <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. I'll have to check that up later on. But if you if you know that word is correct, then that's fine. Most of, so I would say avoid a word like folk, right? I would say go with something like people or let's say you could collectively say society, right? Folk is a bit of an informal word, all right? So I would say go with most people state that it's a obligation to take care of the geriatrics in one's family or the society. I'm in favor. Okay. I'm in favor of the aforementioned fact. And then I'm going to validate my stance using two paragraphs followed by a conclusion, not following by a conclusion, followed by a conclusion. Right? Good. That is a good introduction. Harini has said many individuals believe we have a responsibility to care for the elderly in our family and communities. That I don't think is correct because. I think that's the same thing. Okay, many, okay, fine, fine. Many individuals believe, fine, we have a responsibility to care for the elderly family. Uh, Harini, again, you're missing your personal opinion as well as the structure of the remaining essay. So you need to fix that. Sajani has sent a revised answer and said, I believe it is a positive influence to the society. In this essay, I will discuss supporting ideas. Okay, when you are saying in this essay, I will discuss supporting ideas for this statement, you have to be specific. So I would say, say, I will discuss two supporting points. So I will discuss three supporting points followed by a conclusion. Don't just say, I will discuss some ideas because definitely you will be discussing ideas. You have to be specific. That specificity shows that you have planned, which means you will go for a better band score. All right. Kamal has Thank said, you, one of the... sorry. Thank you, sir. Okay. One of the conspicuous problems in today's contemporary world is the importance of look after the descendants. Majority of society advocate with people. Have an... Okay. Kamal, I mean, the, 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 some of the words you have used are good, but some of the words you have used don't really go with or don't really match the context of what you're trying to say. Furthermore, you need to pay attention to your capitalization as well as your grammar, right? If you make mistakes, there might be a problem, but you, okay, but again, you have not given, 
what is your opinion on this topic right you have said majority of society advocate with people have an authority to look after the ancestors but you haven't said what do you believe i believe right that needs to be there uh, but even majority of society should be all right but i would suggest be more specific in terms of your opinion all right mushtaq has said majority of people states that they are okay so the majority of people if you are saying people peace simple states that they are obliged to take care of the senior citizens in our family and community in my opinion i believe we hold a responsibility of taking care of elderly people is our first okay be, be be careful about your spellings right sometimes it it might come out in a wrong way okay so be careful about that it should be is our first job this essay will delve into two main perspectives not prospectives with relevant examples to support the views followed by a conclusion right you always have a conclusion so make sure you state that as well okay right sir i i actually wrote it on a paper so i was just rushing typing on it so i think there was the mistakes in the paper i wrote it <laughs> <laughs> that's why i chose paper based not the computer based yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it might come out completely wrong you know <laughs> from what you intended so be careful <laughs> all right okay so we are going to move on from that all right so that is how you write an introduction now we are going to look at how to write a body paragraph right when you are writing a body paragraph you have to think of your body paragraph as a mini essay right your body paragraph is a mini essay when you are writing an essay what do you need to have an introduction body and conclusion similarly if your body paragraph is a mini essay then your body paragraph needs to have an introduction body and conclusion clear very simple right we just give this different names we don't call it introduction body and conclusion we give it a few different names right now imagine now you have already said in this particular topic we have said it's a smart marketing move right and in order to elaborate why this is a smart marketing move we are going to use one point and we are going to say it is a smart marketing move because it increases our sales and revenue that is going to be our introduction so the introduction to my first body paragraph is going to be i believe this is a positive development because it will increase a company's sales and revenue clear that's going to be our topic sentence our introduction is called our topic sentence right introduction is called our topic sentence so what we do in this topic sentence is we introduce what we are going to write in our body paragraph right we introduce what we are going to write in our body paragraph right then we can explain it now here i have said sentence to but it doesn't have to be one sentence you can write multiple sentences explaining this topic sentence you can give some general ideas what society believes you can just elaborate on it in two to three sentences ideally right then this is very important you have to give an example example means not a general example right as in you can't say many companies have increased their sales and revenue because they marketed their products in a new way no you have to be specific it doesn't have to be a personal example but it has to be a specific example so for example you can say when coca cola was introducing coke zero they marketed it in a completely new way right they marketed it as the first zero sugar soda in the country because of that they were able to increase their sales and revenue because more people wanted to be the first to purchase this new product we are talking about coca cola as the company specific example not a general example a very specific example right finally we have the conclusion this is not 
the final conclusion, guys. This is the conclusion in your body paragraph. Right? Understand this very carefully. This is the conclusion of your body paragraph. What do you do here? You have to summarize your points. Right? You have to summarize your points. As in, you have to summarize what you wrote in your body paragraph. You have to summarize what you wrote in your body paragraph. Then, you have to connect this body paragraph to the question. I told you, you have to maintain your coherence and cohesion. Everything you write, every example, every point, every paragraph, every line has to be connected to the question. How do we show the examiner that this paragraph is connected to the question? We write it in our conclusion. Let me give you an example. We have started here by saying, first of all, promoting a product's novelty in advertising can aid companies in boosting brand recognition. Right? So what are we going to talk about in this body paragraph? We are going to say, by promoting a company's product in a new way, it's going to improve the brand recognition of that company. Right? It's going to increase the brand recognition of that company. I've explained it. I've said, when businesses introduce a new product, they frequently spend money on marketing initiatives to generate buzz and raise consumer awareness. I've just written one line, but you don't have to stick to one line. Two, three, maybe even four lines. If you want to, you can write. Okay. Example. For instance, Coca-Cola marketed Coke Zero as an innovative and unique product, highlighting its status as the first zero sugar soda with the same taste as original Coke. By emphasizing its novelty, Coca-Cola successfully etched the product and brand into the minds of its target audience through their advertising campaigns. Specific example. Specific example. Not a generic example. Right? Specific example. This is important. In a nutshell, the product and brand get greater consumer recognition making this a positive development in the field of advertising, right? What have I done? I have summarized my point, which is the product and brand get greater consumer recognition. That's what we have said in this entire paragraph. Making this a positive development. What have they asked in the question? Do you think this is a positive or negative development? I have clearly said, at the end of my body paragraph, this is a positive development. Now, does the examiner have to understand whether this is a positive or negative? No, you have clearly stated. He doesn't have to go back and check the question. He doesn't have to do maths in his mind and you know blow his mind trying to think, okay, has he written whether it's a positive or negative or what? No, you have clearly said this is a positive development. The examiner will love this answer, right? This the examiner, not the answer. The examiner will love this structure, right? You introduce your point, you explain it, you give an example, and you conclude it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right? Very simple. All of this is one paragraph, right? Body paragraph one. Now you need to pay attention to the cohesive devices, okay? We have, the, I mean, there are so many cohesive devices that you can use, right? There are so many cohesive devices that you can use, but I am going to give you just a few cohesive devices that you can use in your answer. Not that you can use, you must use in your answer, right? Let me give you those cohesive devices, right? If you are writing the first paragraph, right? So paragraph one, right? You start by saying, first of all, right? First of all, you could also say to begin with, right? To begin with. You could also say 
Firstly, any of these words can be used. When you're explaining, you can say to explain this in detail, right? And you can continue. When you're giving the example, you can say for example, very easy, for example. When you're giving the conclusion, you can say in, in summary, right? This is your first paragraph. If your first, sorry, if your second paragraph, if your second paragraph agrees with your first paragraph, right? If your second paragraph agrees with your first, you're saying two supportive points, right? You can say secondly, right? You can say moreover. You can say furthermore, right? Any of these words can be used. Now, remember, you can't again say to explain this in detail. Why? You're repeating yourself. So what do you say? You can say to elaborate this further, right? To elaborate this further. You can't again say for example. So what do you say? For instance, right? For instance. You can't again say in summary. So what do you say? To summarize. Or you can say in a nutshell. Right? In a nutshell. Or in conclusion, you can say. That's if your, if your second paragraph agrees with your first. Right? If your second paragraph disagrees with your first. Right? If your second paragraph disagrees with your first. You can use these cohesive devices, right? You can say, on the contrary, right? On the flip side, right? Aside or on the other hand, right? These cohesive devices can be used. Do you understand? Outside of that, there are so many other devices to use. Therefore, moreover, so many other cohesive devices that you can use, right? Uh, we've done a free video on it on YouTube, so you can go check that out. Or you could, of course, get access to our 10-day training program where we go through all this in detail. Plus, you get access to all the documents as well, okay? All right. So keep in mind, only one point per paragraph. So if you're saying it's going to improve brand recognition, then in that whole paragraph, just talk about brand recognition. If you're going to talk about sales and income, then only talk about that, right? Don't try to mix everything and create an acharu. You just write one point and elaborate on that with a good quality specific example, all right? Finally, we come to the concluding paragraph. This is the final conclusion, right? This is the final conclusion. Here, always start with the cohesive device in conclusion, right? I mean, it's the best cohesive device that you can use for the conclusion. So I would suggest you always just go with that as your default cohesive device for the conclusion. For the conclusions of the body paragraphs, you can say in a summary or in summary, in a nutshell to summarize, whatever. But for the final conclusion, you say in conclusion, right? What do you do here? Now, you remember that opinion or the personal view that you gave in your introduction? You write that same thing here again. Same thing as in not word for word, the same thing. You paraphrase it again and you write it here. But you write your opinion, right? Then reasons and details. Reasons and details mean you summarize the two body paragraphs that you wrote. What are the two points you wrote in your body paragraphs? Ideally, you summarize this in one to two sentences. That's more than enough, right? Just one to two sentences, more than enough. If it's one sentence, much better. Right. And then you have a closing line. So the closing line either can be, again, one of your opinions. You can give a general statement. But either which way, you need to emphasize why you wrote this essay. What was the point? What is the outcome? Right. That's what you have to do in your concluding paragraph. 
say to sum up now i said use in conclusion right that's the best one in conclusion i believe that presenting a product as innovative can have positive outcomes for companies right it not only enhances their market share but also spreads awareness about the product to a larger audience and creates a sense of accountability for the company to fulfill its promises all right as long as the company delivers a product of high quality i am of the opinion that this marketing strategy can be highly effective for any organization all right so we write our personal opinion again we summarize the body paragraphs and we give a closing sentence that's how you complete your essay all right now next we are going to discuss the different types of essays that you will get at the exam but before that before we get there i hope you got a clear understanding of each part of the essay writing structure introduction body and conclusion guys ask questions if you have now about the structure but remember like i told you at the very beginning you can't just watch this webinar you can't just go and just watch this again and again and improve your essay writing you can't you have to practice writing in this structure once you have practiced 6 to 7 times then you will be able to write without looking at this video without looking at the structure right but this structure is very important simply because there's nothing to really cut marks in this structure right as i'm talking simply about the structure right not the grammar or spellings or anything in the structure there are no weak points i haven't come across a better structure than this which is why i personally give this out to all my students right up to date i've never come across a better structure than this right so this is the best essay writing structure out there most students have gone on to get band 7 plus scores following this structure right and you can too but you you have to practice practice multiple times ensure that you are writing in the correct structure always once you have finished writing go and double check have i written three sentences in my introduction have i written four four sections in my body paragraph have i written those four different cohesive devices have i written three parts in my conclusion right always go and check that makes sense okay before we go into the q and a and also the okay this is the full essay right again we have followed all the patterns all the structures right okay let me just give you a reminder about the offer we have today for the 10 day ilts program you need to just send a message to this number if you want to register if you say today and if you confirm that you will be joining the 10 day ilts program you will get the discount you don't have to pay today right you don't have to pay today you just have to confirm that you are joining so text this number get it down screenshot it whatever and confirm your participation for the 10 day program if you confirm today you get a 5000 rupee discount so the course will only be 20000 rupees whereas it's usually 25000 rupees in the 10 day program you get to go through 10 days of live lecturing right so myself and another lecturer which is prashalini we will be conducting the 10 day program and you have access to us at all times so if you need to ask questions if you need to call us if you need to clarify any doubts we are available for you outside of this you also get access to our video course The video course has everything you need to know about the ILTS exam in a pre-recorded format so that even if you miss a class you can just go and check the video course even after our classes are done you can check the video course and the best part is that if you have your exam in April or May you can still join the classes now pay for one batch and you can continue to attend lectures free of charge so let's say you pay for March but your exam is in may you can attend the april batch you can attend the may batch as well free of charge no cost no extra cost so for 20000 rupees i think that is a steal right and you also get access to our information bank 
which includes all the written material, our lecture slides, additional information, cohesive devices, vocabulary, all of these things. We even have included the teacher's guide for anyone that wants to go through it and have a read. But everything you need is included once you join our 10-day ILTS program. It's the best of out there, guys. I mean, no other class will allow you to join as many classes as you want. It's not really 10 days if you think about it, especially if your exam is in April or May. You get to join as many classes as you want, right? All for 20,000 rupees. Take the offer if you're taking it, but you have to confirm today, right? Today, tomorrow onwards, price is going back up to 25,000, all right? Okay, with that being said, let's move on to the questions. Anyone that has questions can ask now. You can unmute yourself, guys. If you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, you can go ahead. Amanda has asked, can we argue both positive and negative in this essay? Uh, let, me, let me discuss that in this section because I'm going to talk about what are the different types of essays, how you can answer how you can answer questions depending on the type of the essay. So I'll address that question, but later on, right? Okay, please tell about the 10-day classes and video course details. Okay, so Prabha, I hope you got an understanding of that. I just did that. Takshi, can you please explain about the letter? Ah, Takshi, I'm sorry, but this webinar is not for essay uh, letter writing, right? We might do a letter writing webinar maybe next month or the month after, but this is not the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you can join our classes. <laughs> you get a full understanding there. Sir, can you mention the time duration that the classes will be conducted? Yes. Classes will be conducted every Tuesday and Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. Tuesday and Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. Good question. I, I completely forgot to mention that. Classes will be held from on Tuesdays and Fridays, 7 to 9 p.m. All right, do you, have, do you have any questions regarding the essay writing structure? What we have discussed today, no? All right. I hope you don't have questions because everything is clear, <laughs> right? Not because it's not clear, <laughs> right? So then we'll move on to the different types of essays that you will get. The first type is agree or disagree guys keep in mind if you see the word or agree or disagree positive or negative you only have to write one side you only have to write either whether you agree or whether you disagree you don't really have to write both okay there are two ways that this question might be asked they might ask to what extent do you agree or disagree to what degree do you agree or disagree with this statement, right? Again, the word or is there. So even if they say to what degree do you agree or disagree, you just have to choose a side. Do you agree or do you disagree? Okay. If you say you agree, write two paragraphs as to why you agree. If you disagree, write two paragraphs as to why you disagree. If you have time, if you want to, if you're really bored, you can write a third paragraph and say why some people might disagree, right? But that is always your third paragraph, not your first two. So if you get an essay or if you get a question that says, or always choose a side, write two paragraphs for that side. If you want, you can write a third paragraph for the other side, but it is not necessary, okay? Here, it's a direct agree or disagree type question. It's the same thing as I told you, okay? Advantages and disadvantages, okay? If they ask you directly, what are the advantages and disadvantages? You have to write for both sides. You have to write one advantage and one disadvantage. Clear? One advantage, one disadvantage. If they ask you positive, now this says or, right? Positive or negative development, only one. Only positive or negative. If they say advantages and disadvantages, you have to write both, right? One advantage and one disadvantage, okay? When you're writing your opinion and if you say, okay, I believe that there are more advantages, 
if you want, you can write two paragraphs for advantages and one for <coughs> disadvantages, right? But if you don't have time, don't write the second paragraph of advantages, just write advantages and disadvantages. Clear? <coughs> More than enough. Outweigh type questions. Outweigh type questions, right? Outweigh type questions are the same as your regular advantages and disadvantages, right? Because they ask you, do you think the benefits of charging admission for museums outweigh the disadvantages? Here again, if you say, I believe the benefits outweigh the disadvantages, you have to write two benefits. If you have time, you can write one disadvantage, but the most important ones are the two benefits. If you say they don't outweigh the benefits and there are more disadvantages, then you need to write two disadvantages, right? Okay, I hope that is clear. Then you have problem and solution, right? You have solution only, you have problem and solution. If they just ask you solutions, what solutions can you suggest? You just write two paragraphs outlining the solutions. Nothing much, very simple. This one, there are two ways to write it. Problem and solution type questions. There are two ways to write the answer to this question. The first is that one paragraph, you have the problem. The next paragraph, you have the solution. Okay, one paragraph, you have the problem. One paragraph, you have the solution. Or in one paragraph, you can have the problem and solution. In the second paragraph also, you can have the problem and solution. Do you understand? So you have two problems and two solutions. So problem and solution in the first paragraph, problem and solution in the second paragraph. Those are the two ways of writing this answer. Discuss type questions. Okay, here again, very simple. You have one opinion, the second opinion, and then they say, discuss both these views and give your own opinion. Okay, two ways of writing this answer. The first is that you write one paragraph for this opinion, one paragraph for this opinion, one paragraph for your opinion. So that's three paragraphs. So one, two, three, right? One, two, and three. The second way is that you write only two paragraphs, one for this and one for this, and into what you agree. Let's say you agree with this one. You just add in one sentence saying, this is also my opinion. Very simple. So you don't have to write three paragraphs. You can just write two and say, this is also my opinion, right? Those are the two methods of writing an answer for discuss type questions. Finally, you have direct questions. Direct questions are very simple. They just ask two questions. Why is it important to take care of them? How should we take care of them? Paragraph one, paragraph two. Very straightforward, very simple. Paragraph one, paragraph two, right? There's a question, sir, what are the arrangements to correct essays and speaking sessions if I go for the video course? If you, okay, this is a, not a question related to the, the lesson, this is regarding the class. Okay, if you purchase only the video course, you can't get the essays and speaking sessions corrected. You'll have to pay for that separately. If you go with the 10 day program, you can get as many essays corrected and as many speaking sessions, speaking videos. You can, we, we give you feedback on your speaking videos. That's unlimited. You can get as many as you want, right? And of course, during the sessions as well, we give you the opportunity to speak. We give you a one-on-one -on -one session as well. So all of that, it's in our 10 day program for the video course. You just get the video course. There's no feedback that happens for that, right? I hope that's clear. Okay. With that guys, just one more reminder about this again, right? <laughs> uh, the 10 day program, 5,000 rupee discount. Confirm it now. If you want to join, you can confirm it right now and we will give you the discount. But that's it. We are done with the webinar today. I hope you got a great understanding about the IELTS essay writing structure. I sincerely hope that this was of value to you. I would love to know your feedback. 
if you could drop your feedback on the group, I would really, really appreciate it. All right. So just if this was beneficial to you, make sure to let us know on the group. We would love to know. All right.